Hi everyone. So we need to have a little bit of a conversation and we need to talk about something that's pretty serious and something that's really important to me. Um, so you may have noticed that I've been posting on my Instagram and in the community section about the Black Lives Matter movement. And I've been kind of drawing the connection between what we're doing here on this channel and this movement. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking more about the connection between the Black Lives Matter movement and mental health. And also I'm going to be talking about why we need to be listening to this movement and ultimately supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. So the first thing that I want to address is something that a lot of creators are facing right now in terms of criticism from their viewers. And that is around the concept of getting political on their channel. And this is something that a lot of people have been coming to me with concerns over as well. They feel that I'm getting too political by speaking out about things like the Black Lives Matter movement and that I should just stick to talking about schizophrenia and mental health. So in response to that, firstly, I just want to make the distinction that racism is not a political issue. It is a human rights issue. And so if you plan on leaving a comment that is bigoted in nature and kind of counteracting this this framework or viewpoint of racism being a human rights issue and not a political one, then please kindly refrain and unsubscribe from our channel. Secondly, intersectionality is a really important concept to understand, and I think it's really important when we're looking at the Black Lives Matter movement and how it relates to things like mental health. When I'm talking about Black Lives Matter and about racism and um, all the topics that are coming up in, in public conversation right now, I'm still talking about mental health. So to start off with this dialogue around intersectionality, I want to give an example from the rally that I attended in my city just this last Friday. It was a march for Black Lives Matter. And I want to give the example that people weren't just chanting Black Lives Matter. They were chanting things like Black Trans Lives Matter. And they were holding signs like Black Mental Health Matters or Black and Indigenous Lives Matter or um, holding signs with stats on homelessness and incarceration rates and that kind of thing. And I think that looking at all of these different social issues is really, really important in the context of looking at the Black Lives Matter movement. And mental health absolutely falls within that context. Racism is really well known to increase psychological trauma as well as increase unfavorable socioeconomic outcomes in populations that experience it. It is also known to uh, increase the risk of developing a psychiatric disorder threefold, and it also leads to feelings of negative self-worth and well-being. Racism can adversely affect mental health in both direct and indirect ways, and research suggests that the adult Black community is 20% more likely to develop uh, severe or serious mental health problems in their lifetime. Additionally, Black adults ages 18 to 25 experience higher rates of mental health problems and lower rates of mental health service utilization than their um, adult uh, white peers as well as older Black adults. And so this suggests that there is an increasing disparity between class and race in terms of uh, mental health challenges and service utilization in the U.S. And this inequality or inequity is just growing. So I want to read you a little excerpt from Dr. Thomas Vance from the Columbia University Department of Psychiatry. So he wrote, Although the Black community roughly constitutes 12% of the United States population, they are overrepresented in high-risk populations, a group that is often impacted by specific negative occurrences. For example, the Black community comprises approximately 40% of the homeless population, 50% of the prison population, and 45% of children in the foster care system. Research shows that exposure to violence, incarceration, and involvement in the foster care system can increase the chances of developing a mental illness. Consequently, the Black community in particular is at significantly increased risk of developing a mental health issue due to historical, economic, social, political influences that systemically expose the Black community to factors known to be damaging to psychological and physical health. So it's very clear that um, different factors in terms of systemic racism and systemic oppression are inhibiting the Black community from moving forward in a meaningful way in society. And they are increasing different social disadvantages like uh, being overrepresented in the homeless population, being overrepresented in the prison population, being overrepresented in the foster care system. And all of these things are negatively impacting mental health in the Black community. 
Now, I've heard a lot of people, I'm from Canada, and I've heard a lot of people in Canada be like, well, this is kind of a U.S. problem, and we don't have this much racism here in Canada, but that is absolutely incorrect. Not only are Black people in Canada experiencing this racism and um, discrimination in terms of mental health services and police forces and whatnot, but we have a really large problem around racism directed towards Indigenous people. And Indigenous people fall into the BIPOC um, community, which is Black and Indigenous people of colour. And so I want to talk to you a bit more about what the landscape of mental health concerns looks like for Indigenous people here in Canada. So when talking about um, this, I'm going to be using suicide as kind of a litmus test for mental wellness within the Indigenous community. So to start off with a statistic, the rate of suicide among First Nations youth is five to six times the national average, which is just unacceptable. Um, The rate of depression is two times the national average, and the overall suicide rate is 2.1 times higher than the national average, which again is just unacceptable. Several studies found that the most important factor in reducing suicide in communities, Indigenous communities, is self-government. And other protective factors that they found included control over land, band-controlled schools, community control over health services, presence of cultural facilities, and community control over fire and police services. So now the rate of suicide in Indigenous communities where none of these factors, these protective factors were present, was 137.5 per 100,000 people. Now just to put this into perspective, the national average or the national rate of suicide is 14 out of 100,000. So that is well over 100 people more per 100,000 that the Indigenous community is experiencing in terms of rates of suicide, which again is unacceptable. Now, the rate of suicide in Indigenous communities where all of these protective factors that I just listed were present was zero. So this is like as clear as it gets in terms of what needs to happen to better support these Indigenous communities and to increase the mental wellness in these Indigenous communities. We need to be listening to what they need and we need to be working with them to collaborate to make this happen. Um, There is just so much systemic racism and systemic oppression ingrained into how we deal with Indigenous communities And it really needs to end. It is so clear by these statistics what needs to happen. And so there needs to be greater emphasis in terms of working with them to learn what they need in order to increase mental wellness in their communities. So to bring it even closer to home to our audience, BIPOC communities are a marginalized group. Likewise, people who are living with schizophrenia or mental illness are also marginalized groups. So it's always important to support each other, but it's even more important as a marginalized group to support this other marginalized group in creating better systems and in in encouraging more equality in terms of how they're treated. And just like it's a fact that BIPOC communities are more likely to suffer police brutality, people living with mental illnesses such as schizophrenia are also more likely to experience police brutality. So the push for defund the police and the push for more accountability in terms of how police are operating and the police brutality that is sweeping the nation and Canada as well is a really important conversation to be having for people who are living with mental illness as well. People with mental illness are subjected to a lot of police brutality and increased police violence in their interactions with them. And so this is a really, really important topic of conversation in terms of engaging in part of the agenda of the Black Lives Matter movement. So to kind of wrap this up, um, based on what we've talked about in this video, it is very, very evident that various factors stemming from racial inequalities seriously impact mental health. So we know that our audience cares a lot about mental health and based on the facts, we believe that it's really important to approach mental health from an intersectional perspective. So if you care about mental health, you should care about the Black Lives Matter movement too. The mental health care system is failing to serve a huge portion of our population and most especially BIPOC communities. Now, it is not enough that we are just making this video to talk about Black Lives Matter in relation to mental health. We understand that we have not done enough on this channel to, um, to 
amplify the voices of the Black community, the Black and Indigenous and people of color community. And we need to do a better job of increasing diversity on this channel. It's very easy because I think I've kind of, I've kind of excused it, our lack of diversity in terms of being like, well, I don't really know anyone in my circle who is Black and experiencing schizophrenia, but that's not an excuse anymore. We need to be proactively finding people who can speak to a more broad range of experience in terms of schizophrenia and of mental health. And we really need to be working to amplify the voices of the BIPOC communities. We understand that we have a serious problem in terms of lack of diversity on this channel. And so we are making the commitment to you right now that we are going to do our absolute best to work harder, to find more diverse voices to showcase on this channel. So what can you do? Um, you can support the Black Lives Matter movement by attending protests and rallies and making your presence part of the movement. And looking for petitions and writing letters to local government about things like increasing racial equality and things like holding police more accountable for their actions. Protest peacefully. Violence against marginalized groups is part of the reason why we're here, and so violence is not part of the solution. And lastly, use your privilege and use your voice. Address the racism that is going on around you whenever you hear it, and do the internal reflective work of trying to dismantle the ingrained racism that is in each of us. It's really hard work, but it's really necessary, and everyone needs to make the commitment to do this hard work right now. So I hope this video helped to kind of explain the connection between the Black Lives Matter movement and mental health, and also serve to just reiterate the fact that if you care about mental health, you should care about the Black Lives Matter movement too. Thank you for watching this video.